Okay, hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I have been commissioned to uh, lay down some uh, guitars for a TV commercial by my good friend Mike at Fusebox Sound. And so I'm gonna walk you through the process of uh, receiving uh, stems, setting up the Pro Tool session, uh, listening through it, figuring out what guitar parts I'm gonna play based on reference tracks and actually laying it down and getting it sent off. Here we go. So I have a uh, completely blank Pro Tools session here, and um, I also have all these wonderful stems that my friend Mike has sent over um, based on the track that he's put together. And um, so I've got drums, I've got guitar, I've got a rough mix, I've got VO. Uh, sometimes he does the actual VO for the commercial and uh, also some, some, some vocals. And then there's a reference. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import these into Pro Tools. We'll have a listen and see what, uh, see what needs to be replaced and see what we can do to make that work. So uh, Pro Tools session open. I am gonna go import all of these lovely tracks here. Convert, boom, into the session. And off we go. Yes, I want them all as new tracks. I'm going to, I can see we're uh, pretty slammed here on the level, so I'm gonna create a uh, master and make sure that um, I'm not blowing everything out here. I see a reference track. It's probably a commercially released track, so I'm not going to play it for, uh, I might get copyrighted here on, uh, on the video. So I've got some drums. I've got, so I'm gonna color coordinate these as I go. Here's some uh, reference guitars. Here's a rough mix. And I'm gonna mute that. And uh, a VO, and I'm gonna uh, get out of the way here. I don't know why that's not, uh, there it is. Okay, VO, I'm gonna move out of the way, keep that muted. Um, again, for copyright purposes, I don't know that I can share what that VO and the vocals are. And then with the vocals, I'm gonna put them here and I'm gonna mute those, keep those out of the way. So let's listen to what he's got for the drums and let's listen to what he's got for the guitars. Cool, so like a punk grunge, thing going on. Well, my friend Mike is a fantastic composer. His strength is not necessarily in guitar. So um, sometimes when it's something like this, he can lay down some scratch tracks, but he would prefer somebody like me to um, actually give it a guitarist's uh, touch and approach. So what we're gonna listen to here is his uh, reference of guitars. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I want to do um, before I get moving is I want to set my tempo, which Mike is always awesome in the folder that he sends. The tempo of the track is in the name of the folder. And we are going to now make sure that uh, we create a click track. One new mono aux input. We're going to label that click. And we're going to drop a click track in here. Instrument click. Boom, 160. I like to, with my clicks, um, depending on what the tempo of the track is. This is fast enough, leaving it at the, uh, the quarter note at 160. Sometimes I'll, if it's a slower tempo, I'll add the eighth note in there. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that's necessary here, so we're just gonna leave it at the, uh, at the quarter note. And um, next stop here is um, we need to create a couple um, guitar tracks. Now for commercial music in a situation like this when it's for um, a television spot or a TV commercial, 
um, sometimes there's revisions and sometimes the composer will want to make adjustments to the track um, as you go. So um, it doesn't make economic sense to mic up an amp and uh, get very precise with that because if you need to redo something or if they want to change a tone and the reamping, it just becomes too much work, especially for a 30 second spot. So uh, the agreement that I have with Mike is that um, I do everything in guitar rig because he has it as well. And I send him the stems of my pat sounds. I send him the patches that I create and I send him the raw guitar track. So he has access if he needs to, if it's in the middle of the night or early one morning or I'm off on a different session or something, um, that that can be adjusted or even he has the same model guitar as I'm using here. He can even lay in something and change it up uh, while keeping the same patch and you know it works. So that is our process here. Um, I'm gonna create, I know I'm probably with this just hearing that, I'm gonna want it doubled if not even tripled. So I'm gonna create uh, three guitar tracks. There we go, guitar one, guitar two, guitar three. And I always make my guitar tracks orange. Don't know why, it's just what I do. So um, we're gonna go to this first one and we're gonna go to instrument, and, or no, I'm sorry, not instrument, we're gonna go to effect and then we're gonna add guitar rig in. Aha, there it is, that beautiful empty guitar rig patch. Okay, um, plug in. So um, with that sound, what do we need? What kind of amp do we need? I'm thinking, you know, what I kind of tend to right away is either the ultrasonic or the gratifier. So let's just, you know, pull one up and listen and see what we get. Something nice and gritty, grungy. I'm on, you know, this uh, bridge pickup here, got the humbucker going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the ultrasonic. And usually, you know, what I'll probably end up doing is using a couple different amps, pan them hard left, pan them hard right. They end up a little bit bigger. Uh, but I got no, oh, you know, it helps if your volume's up. Level's a little hot. It's probably too much gain as well, but maybe bringing down my inputs here. Still hot, wow. There we go. Probably too hot, but I'm gonna give it a little air over here. So he's in B minor and I'm out of tune. So I'm going to uh, tune really quick. Tuning completed. Listen to that. So key of B minor here. That's what's going on. Um, that's the basic riff. I'm gonna learn it as I go, but before I go any further into it, uh, this is usually the spot in the session where I call Mike and I tell him my thoughts and we kind of talk about what we're gonna do and what he is hoping to get out of it beyond just the reference that he had sent. So I'm gonna listen through one more time um, and make sure uh, nothing ju else jumps out for another idea um, or see if something does so that I can present to him, you know, what I think would uh, help with this.
Okay, yeah. Um, what I am hearing, and this is also really helpful with something like this when there is a voiceover the whole time, is doubling it, hard left, hard right, different. It could be the same guitar, different amps, or same amp, different guitars. We'll see, I'll probably stick with this guitar and then just do different amps. It makes the guitar feel broader, so anything in the middle, such as VO, is going to um, stand out a little bit. Um, and then I'm looking uh, at the screen here and I'm seeing these are the VO lines, um, and especially in this middle section, he's got this breakdown, there's a little bit less guitar, a big chunk of VO is going on here. So. I like what he did, I like the riff, um, I like the tone. Um, that might be a section where we just drop into uh, one guitar there to make room for all of that VO, and then when the other ones come back in, it's bigger. Not only is it a less distorted tone, but it really helps it broaden uh, in the midst of that track. But if I do that, I'm probably gonna double it anyway and give Mike the option when he mixes it or you know when he finishes the track to do that. So, um, and there may be um, some, you know, little, little, little double stop in. somewhere in there. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a pretty simple, straightforward, you know, I mean, if it's a grungy track, you don't typically hear a lot of that stuff. So, but it does need to feel exciting at the same time. So as we get into it, we'll see um, if it needs anything like that. Yo! Dude! What's happening, man? Yeah, I uh, I have the track open and I'm ready to go. And um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, 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 do you have any ideas beyond, you know, what you um, what what you sent? Basically, I'm trying not to dial in a sound that's like that reference piece. Gotcha. Which is something that they've done in the past. Yeah. Um, it's pretty standard, you know, and I, I think the main thing is that, like, real, um, I don't know, kind of the, the, the muted part of it. It's like, it's like a, the, it's not like a typical palm mute, but it's like that kind of metal-y sound. You, you get more, I'm sure you get when you listen to it. Yeah, saying, yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Um, that's, that's, and it's just like, I, I don't, it doesn't need more than just that thing, because again, that, the piece that they have that, that, you know, I mean, this is something from a long time ago, but, um, that is just like it's just a guitar and then there's you know we can throw a bass in there it's not like it's, it needs a bunch of other parts or anything yeah that's what i mean that's what i was thinking the only um other idea that i had was to uh, just double it you know um which we tend to do anyway and then that middle section may not need even the double and it just can be the one guitar straight up and again like always if you have thoughts or ideas or you want to throw something else down yeah feel free, you know, and that middle part kind of does something different, just to kind of change it up. Um, no, yeah, your, uh, your lines that you did there, I think are really great. The... Is, is great. Those little, those little yeah. things are cool. So, but I'll give it the, you know, the guitarist's flair. Yeah, you get what I'm doing. I mean, that's yeah. pretty, pretty shoddy what I did, but, um, as far as, uh, skill, but, um, <laughs> so yeah just do do your thing sweet okay nice. well i'm uh on to it and um i'll, I'll hit you up once i've uh, sent them over sounds great dude all right, all right brother you're welcome talk to you soon right. bye See ya. so pretty basic conversation right uh there's not much to it i'm going to listen to the reference track here i couldn't play it for copyright purposes but that's um we're going for something <laughs> That's not quite the sound. Now that we've had that conversation and going for something a little bit grittier, um, that to me in this context is, um, it's a little too, I hate to say it, it's a little too, um, little too well-rounded. I want something that breaks up a little bit more. Um, let's try this, the hot solo here. That's not bad. I do like that. 
Nothing to it. Um, all right, so I think all I really want to add to this is a um, little bit of a reverb on it. I mean, I don't need any compression. It's distorted. It's... <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of a long spring on that. I like it, it's something that's really basic. I usually when I'm doing this to do it uh, quickly uh, and to save time. Um, I'm not gonna try and learn the whole thing and play it all the way through. I'll get that first section down. And from what I heard, the end is the same as the first section. So I'm gonna do those two sections separately, or first, together, separately. Uh, and then I'll dive into that middle section that's got those different riffs and come up with something that's gonna work for that. So um, I'm just going to do one playthrough here and make sure that there isn't some weird change that I didn't catch. All right, so let's do take one and get this first guitar part in there. One, give it a listen. Ba -bom, ba -bom. I like how I did that riff slightly differently. It wasn't intentional, but I kind of like what I did. Sorry, all right, yeah, let's throw a double down right off the bat. Duplicate that track. Let's pan them hard left and hard right. Record enable number two. And um, let's switch out the amp. See what we've got when we go to... You know, something that might be fun here is going to a citrus with it. Um, we're going to add the bright in there. Oh, yeah. There's just something about those orange amps that are really cool. Um, and see how they blend together. That's nice. I'm gonna do it one more time. I didn't quite feel that, but I like the way they blend. Here we go. Take two, guitar two. Nice, let's give that a listen, see how they work together. That's cool, I like it. I'm just gonna tweak up the end of these falling off there. Oop, too fast. It's great. So now let's take that same riff down to the end of the track when it comes back in. So, and it just cuts off at the end like that. Why? Because we're at 32 seconds. The commercial has ended. That track runs straight into the end, cuts to black, next spot comes in. It's usually the end of commercial tracks end like that. Sometimes we do funny things um, just to make each other laugh, but cut it off, get on with it. So let's drop in that, um, that last riff. Easy peasy. Uh, number two, or number one, that was number two. Here's number one.
Give that a listen. Don't even need those at the end, but I'm gonna be a, a good little <clears throat> engineer here and clean it up so it looks nice and even. Take these. By the way, Pro Tools. This thing right here, Contour Shuttle Pro. I don't even use the keyboard that much. This thing is amazing. Check it out, I'll put the link in the description. Awesome, awesome. There's a bit of a, you know, learning curve to get into the habit of using the buttons the way that you've set, up, set them up. But once you have, it's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna learn this uh, B section. So there's two different sections there. It's boom. So it's the first one. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do a punch in here, or I mean a, a pre-roll of two bars. And then we're gonna hit it right on that spot. You know, I'm being thrown off by his temp guitar track is in there. I'm gonna try one more time without it. <clears throat> one more time, it was pretty good. I didn't quite feel it, I was thinking. Too much. I was, thinking, I was thinking about what I was doing rather than just doing it. I'm happy with that. Let's do a double. Here we go on the double. Back with the punch in. There it is. You know what, that fall off on the guitar too, right at the end, I went a little too long, so I'm gonna punch that in uh, and just make it a little bit shorter. There it is. Uh, and so now we're just gonna trim that up. Love it, okay, great. Um, so we're gonna pull that back here, do a little crossfade on these. And we're gonna do a little crossfade here. Typically, you know, with a raw guitar track going into guitar rig, you know, um, these little these little edits you're just not gonna hear. That's cool, I like that uh, it's, it sounds like a hard stop and then starting again, which I really like about this, uh, getting into that. Love it. <clears throat> you know, the only other thing that I'm thinking here is I'm gonna do a third guitar. <clears throat> um, starting in the middle section, uh, but I'm gonna do a completely different tone. And so I wanna use something that maybe if it was the only guitar, it would sound cool on its own. Um, and then 
dropped in for the last section if there were all three guitars that it would be really cool together. So I'm going to go with the, uh, the high white here. And um, you know it helps if you enable it or if your input is the correct input. That always helps. That's cool. Um, and high white is a pretty clean amp, so I'm going to add uh, a little distortion in there. What would be treble booster might be kind of fun. It's just kind of gnarly and overdriven, and there's something about it that I dig. Like that's. up a bit, a little treble, a little present. Now something like this a little bit cleaner, I'm going to throw a compressor on the front to just try and get it to punch a little bit without um, uh, driving it too hard. Which it actually does drive it a little hard, so I'm going to Roll back on that boost. Yeah, it just got some nastiness to it. That might actually work really well. So I'm going to drop that in, pan straight up the middle. Um, and we're going to roll this B section to the end and see, see what happens. So let's see how that sounds by itself. It's a cool tone. Add a little bit of reverb. Cool. Yeah, let's punch in the ending now with all three guitars. Um, I think that ending could be nice and full. There it is. I like the three of those together for that ending. And then he's got that option. Um, in that middle section to, uh, to go with just the one or split them in a ver variety of different ways. Man, I don't think this track needs anything else. Like this one is pretty... <laughs> cool. And again, I pulled off on that a little late on get guitar two. Nice, that works. I'm gonna try and clean these up a little bit differently. And then um, just add little crossfades in the beginning and the end of these just to clean them up. Don't really need it here at the end, but I'm going to do it anyway just because it makes me feel better about myself. And, um, and let's just give it a listen through and see if anything jumps out. I mean, it's, like I said, this is really straightforward track for a skateboard company. Here we go.
take it back. I think we need a fourth track in here. Um, well, I thought two things. Uh, yes, we need a fourth track. I want a higher part to add in at the end. And then in the middle section, I thought what would be really cool is if it were... You just had the one nasty guitar in the middle playing that riff and then the ba da 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 um, could be the left and right come in. So for instance, um, I'm not going to do it when I send it to him. I will tell him that and give him the option to do that. But it would be kind of cool if it did this. You know, it can build it that way. So that's a pretty cool, as a matter of fact. You know, do the stereo guitars come back in for the second round? I think you do that. If you're gonna do that riff, then they need to stay there. Do you lose the middle one for this? Nah, it's gotta be all three. Actually, I think I'm going to leave it that way and that's what it's gonna be. So, onto the fourth guitar, some sort of high part, some sort of something that gives it more energy. I feel like we've maxed out our energy uh, at this point and it just needs a little something more. So I'm gonna do, uh, actually I don't wanna do it that way. We're gonna duplicate uh, guitar three and we're gonna call it guitar four. And we're gonna go back to guitar rig. Actually, what I like to do with this kind of stuff, um, if it's going to be something added or some kind of frill or something unique, um, I'm gonna use a mono to stereo guitar rig um, and put some sort of stereo effect on it. Um, I also think with this amp wise, let's go back to, let's do our hot solo here, see what we get with that. And then what I always think is kind of fun just for a, a cool stereo effect is to go to uh, modulation and stereo tune, add that in and then we're gonna throw our reverb back on there. Maybe a little delay when we get there. That spring is working really well. Um, let's, let's see what kind of sound we've got here. Yeah, nice and, nice and wide. So I'm just gonna loop that ending. I don't know what I'm going for. Um, I just know I feel like I need something. So I'm just gonna loop this and um, play along and see what we can find. That's gonna work. Let's drop that in the end. I duplicated that track, that's why that whole layer was there um, and we no longer need it. So let's just drop that high part in at the end. There it is. I feel like that is um, enough. I like that I kind of did some ch chunks here. with and here's without. And I'll add it back in. Okay, 
So now that um, this is all laid out and ready to go, I'm ready to bounce these stems down for uh, my friend Mike. So I'm gonna highlight the whole track there. I've got the click track solo saved so that he's got that at the top of each track so he's definitely able to uh, know exactly where they're supposed to uh, line up without having to go searching for it. Lord knows we've done that kind of stuff before and it's really a pain. So any little thing like this that just smooths out the process is um, super helpful. So I'm gonna go <clears throat> bounce mix. I want, because these are mono tracks, one, two, and three are mono tracks for stereo, I want them to be uh, mono, mono summed, 24 bit, 48, choose this. I've created this folder. I'm gonna create ME tracks in there and I'm gonna go open and I'm gonna bounce ME guitar one. Out it goes, hallelujah. Now what I wanna do is I wanna mute guitar rig and go file, bounce mix, doing this again, ME guitar one, raw. So now that he's got the raw guitar track, if he needs to use it with his own version of guitar rig, giving him the option. Track like this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, most likely not going to be the case, but if, um, you know, if the company came back or the ad agency came back and said, you know what, we want that sound to be a little bit different, then he's got it. The performance is there. So bouncing that down. And uh, cool, so now we're gonna do the same thing, one with guitar rig and one without for the other three guitar tracks. So let's go to guitar two, soloed, file, bounce mix, guitar two, boom. Okay, file, bounce mix, guitar two, raw. Guitar three. Now I do believe that um, newer versions of Pro Tools have a way to bounce stems if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I have not learned how to do that yet. So if anybody knows about that and can send that my way, I would be happy to uh, know how that works. Okay, now we're on to guitar four, and remember, <clears throat> when we go to bounce guitar four, it's a stereo, um, so we need to make sure that this one bounces as uh, interleaved. Guitar four, bounce. Now, we've got this dead space in here, if you're looking at this, all of this dead space here. Um, I'm still bouncing it, because if I bounced it at the end, then you know, Mike, when he received the track, would just have this one little clip and not know exactly where it went. So by bouncing from the beginning and each uh, stem has the same click in the same place, it makes it much easier to just drop them in and know what you got and then he can just get rid of what he doesn't need. The 30 second tracks, audio files are small. It's not a, it's a matter of space, so it's not a big deal. Um, okay, so bouncing this last one, guitar four, raw. Done. Last thing we're gonna do here, <clears throat> we'll turn these back on. And um, not much to these guitar rig patches, nothing fancy going on here. But what we're going to do is, we're gonna save them anyway. Um, save as skateboard. Skateboard L. Skateboard R. and um, skateboard C. So you've got left, right, center, and then I'm gonna do on the fourth one, we're gonna do save as, and we're gonna go skateboard lead. Great. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to these four, skateboard, L, C, R, and lead, and I'm gonna go export selected presets to skateboard ME tracks, boom. So now I've taken those presets um, and I've put them in with my stems. I'm gonna rename this to Skateboard ME Tracks. And then I'm gonna just take this folder and I'm gonna drop it in the Dropbox uh, and send it off to Mike. And 
that's it. 